been studying about Paul's ministry. And if I sit down, everyone can't see me. So we've been studying about Paul's ministry, and we got him through a lot of things and all the way to Rome where he was under house arrest for, we know, at least two years. And he wrote a lot of letters. Some he wrote before uh, he was arrested and some after he was arrested. Paul is responsible for writing about half of our New Testament. Um, last week we talked about the book of Corinth, books of Corinthians, because we have two letters that he wrote to the Corinthians, and um, he gave some good instruction to Christians through that. Today we're going to talk about the book of Galatians. Okay, he, Paul wrote this book to a group of churches in Galatia, which we think is basically the country of Turkey, what we call Turkey today. And he asked them what in the world they were believing because it wasn't the gospel that he taught them. The gospel he taught them was salvation through Jesus. But some people had, had come in to their church who was teaching them that, yeah, yeah, Jesus stuff is all good, but you have to keep the law of Moses to be saved. And Paul said, no, that's not true. We are saved through faith. We're not saved through obeying rules and regulations. We're saved because we accept Jesus as our boss. And that doesn't mean that we can just live any old way. We do have to live the way Jesus tells us to. Because if he's our boss, we do what he tells us, right? Which means we live a life of righteousness because he wants us to and not a life uh, where we're our own boss and obey, obey our own flesh. Part of his teaching was um, what we call the fruits of the spirit. But first he said, you know, if you live where you are your own boss, then you're going to steal, you're going to lie, you're going to be selfish, you're going to go out in wild parties, you're going to commit adultery. You're going to do all sorts of things that don't make God happy. That's the fruit of worshiping yourself or worshiping Satan. If you're not worshiping Jesus, you're worshiping Satan. But most people do that through worshiping themselves, trying to make themselves happy. If you are living a life where you are trying to make Jesus happy, where Jesus is your boss, then your life will produce the fruit of the Spirit. Now, do you know what a fruit is? Uh, it's a plant that keeps its seeds. Okay, it's the part of the plant that has the seeds in it. And that's the fruit. And we have, we have some pictures up here of some all different kinds of good fruit. Um, uh, and a couple that I'm not fond of, but <laughs> other people think they're good fruit. So, um, and, and fruits, are sweet and they taste good and they're they're like a dessert. They're, they're so good. In fact, when I buy grapes, grapes and cherries both, when they come into our house, they disappear instantly. I just they're gone. Um, and that's how good fruit is. So when we are serving God, our life naturally produces fruit. And that fruit is uh, meekness or gentleness, depending on which translation of the Bible you use. Uh, but they mean the same thing. Gentleness, goodness, love, self-control, which the King James calls temperance. Faith, peace, joy, patience, kindness. When you serve God, your life begins to produce these things. And nobody in the history of humanity has passed a law against any of these things. Can you imagine if they tried to pass a law against joy? It's illegal to be joyful. That wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> or against love, or against patience. There is nothing to hinder us from the world in expressing these things. These are the natural outcomes of serving God and loving God. This is what happens. Okay, let's sing our song. Right there. The Lord is. 